Hello, good evening, Oral Gibbs, and welcome to Oral Gibbs Live. And this evening, I have uh, none other than MP, Dr. Laurie Richardson, President of Parliament. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well. Thank you, uh, Oral. Thank you for having me here. And thank you for accepting the invitation. Um, it's the first time that we have a President of Parliament since then, then, then. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so it's good to have you here. Yes. So how has it been? Um, it's been, what, six, seven months now? Seven, seven months now, yeah that I have uh, taken up this task, uh, not one of my um, preferential tasks, but um, you know, I've been chosen and uh, I decided to uh, give it my, my, my best shot, you know. So um, being president of parliament, for the average person that doesn't know what that entails, maybe you can tell us. Well, some, some people say, you know, uh, anybody could be a president of parliament that shows you and that's it. But no, the, the president of, of parliament has very serious uh, function. Uh, uh, number one, you have to preside over meetings, uh, which uh, at times can become complicated, especially uh, when you have uh, coalition governments, and it seems that we're going to have coalition governments for a very long time. Uh, you know, meetings are, are at times very challenging. Uh, you have to keep the order. Uh, you also have to direct and, and make sure that uh, everything uh, transpires the way the rules of order has um, uh, delineated uh, them to be. Um, but there are also uh, many background duties. There's invitations to many functions. Uh, there is um, a lot of correspondence that comes into to Parliament that has to be um, handled and processed. Yes, we have a secretariat. Uh, at this point in time, uh, some able people there also um, who assist with this. But there's a lot of reading uh, to do uh, so that you know exactly uh, what is transpiring at every uh, level. Uh, then you have to also preside over the Presidium. The Presidium is uh, basically consists of the Secretary General, uh, the two Vice President and the, the President of Parliament. And uh, we have sometimes meeting twice a month. Uh, yesterday we had a meeting for three hours even though we are in recess. Um, you have to keep um, tabs with um, our international affiliates, like for instance, Palatino, um, the other countries in the kingdom, uh, Holland, Aruba, and Curaçao, um, and make sure that everything goes well there. We also look at our budget very carefully, uh, and what was the biggest challenge for, for this presidium uh, when I came in was uh, the fact that um, we did have a Fungsi book, so uh, a human resource uh, manual, but did not at all uh, describe uh, the functions of parliament, the job descriptions of, of the uh, workers at parliament uh, were not um, accurately describing ex their functions, and so um, there was uh, some confusion there with regards to uh, certain positions, etc. And the structure was not at all uh, commensurate with the duties that were uh, to be carried out. So we decided, uh, based on everything could be politicized, we wanted to make sure that we depoliticize uh, those people working permanently in Parliament. Okay, and we understand that um, some of those nominations, some of those positions, uh, yeah, uh, were given uh, politically, but we wanted to um, diminish that, 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 that quality as much as possible and have uh, an independent assessment done of uh, the staff by interviewing, etc., and also to make sure that their function and their job description fit exactly what they were doing. And we made sure that the structure uh, was more coherent with how f parliament should function and that people function in their strengths rather uh, being forced to function uh, in their weak 
areas, etc. So that has been a long process, but it has uh, come to fruition now. And uh, it's at the, the point where it will be handled in Parliament um, at the beginning of, of August. So everybody has uh, copies of it. Uh, discussions have been held in Parliament about it, first with uh, the Presidium and the people um, contracted to do so, and then uh, with the, frac the faction leaders and from faction leaders to a CC, a Central Committee meeting. And then there's going to be the uh, public meeting to accept uh, that function book. And I think that will definitely enhance uh, the functioning of uh, Parliament uh, uh, from the very beginning now and into the future. What are, what are some of the priorities for Parliament, as you just mentioned, when you return from this recess? Because we have the whole integrity chamber and some other issues on the table, GEBE, etc. Yeah. Well, um, uh, for sure, uh, anything that has to do with um, complying with some of uh, the agreements made at the inception of the country uh, and things that, for instance, are, are taking place now at the kingdom level with regards to, you know, uh, car base and so forth, uh, they always have a deadline. And that in itself creates a conflict. Because if, you, if, you, if you, you're going to look at parliament as the highest body, that shouldn't be just a rubber stamp. Uh, it is designed in such a way that discussions take place at different levels, and then reports are given. And when it's ready to, for a decision, it's taken to a public session. Something as sensitive as the integrity chamber, where we know somewhere around June in 2014, this process began where um, the government called for an integrity study to be done. The, then the, um, the Reiken Kamer, you know, did one also. And uh, the Dutch government ordered one also, or ordered the government to execute one. And these reports came out. And out of these reports, um, there were several you know, um, suggestions as to what should be done to make St. Martin and the functioning of government more integral. All right, um, government took up the strain then, okay, and started a discussion with civil servants in Holland with regards to the setting up of this integrity chamber. That process has continued to the point where um, St. Martin decided, no, you know something, all along, while Holland was telling them to, to wait, they have a suggestion, they have a, a format. St. Martin went ahead and prepared their own. Holland tried to, to, to um, basically stagnate the, the process by telling them to wait, but we continued, we pursued. Then this was brought and, and discussed with, with Parliament, and uh, we had our qualms with it. Lately, and this is, I'm talking about the end of May now, uh, another um, discussion at kingdom level ensued where the Minister of Justice and, and the, the Prime Minister decided, look, Holland has made some con um, considerations of what we were suggesting, some of the changes we were suggesting, etc. And they felt that it, was, it would be acceptable to Parliament and so they signed uh, the agreement, which met with a lot of uh, opposition. But from the coalition side, not with stiff opposition as has been portrayed by the, the press. What we told them is, listen, we, uh, we congratulate you for what you have accomplished because some of the, 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 the considerations were not forthcoming before. Uh, but at the same time, this country, which has gone through higher supervision already, have some, some trust problems uh, with the way some of these things are executed. Number one, uh, the culture, difference. The, the way uh, people from Holland think, the way local St. Martiners think about certain issues. So we wanted to make sure that we add in 
all the elements that we thought would meet with some problems here in St. Martin, which takes time because a presentation is going to be made, listen, we, we, we think this is acceptable. And then the members of parliament say, no, it's not acceptable. Look at this, look at that, look at this. I think we should change this here. XMP is going to say, no, 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 I think that we should need to look at this too, and so forth and so forth. Which means that this thing must go through a process. So suggestions were made and given back to government. And government then have to go and make those amendments or make those uh, suggested amendments. Or it could come from the MPs too. It could come from the side of parliament. But since this issue is a law to set up an integrity chamber, it simply means that you need a lot of legal minds involved in this process to make sure that whatever you are planning is within the ambit of, number one, the kingdom law and also St. Martin's constitution. So it's not a one, two, three situation. And some people feel that we are just stalling. No, we're not stalling. We gave the ministers uh, um, their homework to do. And the ministers then have to come back and say, OK, and this is what we've done. I had a meeting with uh, the, the prime minister on Friday. And I told him straightly, if you get through with your homework, in other words, what the, the MPs have asked you to do, I'm going to call a meeting even if it's in recess. You know, we're in recess. We're going to call around the members, wherever they are, okay, and say, listen to me, this issue is important, and we want to continue with the process, okay? Now, there are some other issues at the level of the ministries that are happening, and one of them is that some of the legal minds are leaving or have left, okay? That retards what the minister is doing. So... We can sit on the outside and say, ah, that's just a, 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 a ploy to, to, you know, let this thing ride on until, no, 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 we would like to get it off our back so that we can go on to other issues, like, for instance, what's happening in the GB. Okay? That's very important for us. Um, if GB is not functioning, you know, we have to stop this broadcast. Yeah. You know? So um, we have many other issues, and we have a, a, a number of laws that, were on the table since the Netherlands and in the time of the Netherlands and Tillies that we have to deal with. Uh, and we want to get on to those so that we can uh, meet uh, the demands that have now placed on us because remember some of them are, are also related to uh, the other partners in the kingdom. Okay? So we have a lot of things in front of us and some of them by virtue of, of what what the, their nature and the nature of those laws, and they take priority. At the same time, we have our, our own problems with health. We have our own problems with, with, with uh, Fromi. Uh, that those are urgent also. So um, we have the housing issue. We have so many things that have gone to court and they are uh, unresolved. Uh, and in, with that integrity chamber is also built in some of those needs that Holland would like to assist with. And those are one of the things that were, were offered in the, in the, in the last um, um, proposal, you know, law proposal for this integrity but, chamber. But do, you, but you, do you see this taking another six months, eight months, or? No, I, 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 I honestly think from our side, that um, with the considerations that we have submitted, uh, that it will take maybe a, me a meeting or two uh, discussion. Uh, and then we have to go back to the table again with Holland and say, well, listen, this is, this is what St. Martin proposes, and see whether that would be acceptable to them. So if, if, if parties don't want to cooperate, yes, it could become a very drawn out uh, thing. Uh, but it's, we, from our side, it's not that we don't want to cooperate, but we just want to make sure that the public at large is protected, okay, mm. when the practice, when this thing is going to be practiced or executed in it, the form that it would be in. Uh, well, the public is saying that it's the politicians who are protecting themselves. They're not really interested in, protect, in protecting the public. Uh, when the public gets involved with one of these uh, uh, issues, okay, and we never know how they could come down, uh, it will be too late 
to correct the situation. The people who are speaking now, some of them are people who have experienced uh, these type of actions uh, when we had the higher supervision here, where it's not that the regulations were bad, it's not that the law were bad. Uh, anybody who is given these functions to carry out can decide to carry them out uh, outside of the law also. So the, the, the executors of, 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 of this law can decide to malfunction and to do things the way they want to do it. And that could be detrimental to the people. And the people could say, we're protecting ourselves. No, if I'm going to protect myself, along with myself comes the protection of everybody, every citizen, every resident here. And that is what we are concerned about. We're concerned that this thing is not taken to lengths that we, by signing a document, hoping that it be executed mm -hmm. in a certain way, then another interpretation is given to it, and it, is, it then not, does not serve the, 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 the people rightfully. Just for clarity's sake here, um, the average person in St. Peter's South Ward, Saunders, watching this program tonight is about uh, an integrity chamber isn't going to focus on me because I just got a nine to five job going about my business. An integrity chamber is looking at government and how it conducts business. That is true. Um, let me give you a scenario, okay, uh, for the man on the street. A person make a request for land. That request is not granted. But a building permit is given, for instance. Or the person just builds on the land, all right? In the meantime, you occupy the land for 30 years, 40 years. And the integrity chamber comes and start to review a situation like that because a normal citizen makes a complaint. When you go back and you look at the law where everybody thinks, well, it's government that's under scrutiny, and maybe government is, was wrong to allow you to build on a piece of land that uh, you didn't have a deed for. Uh, but were you right to build on a piece of land, okay, without a deed? It also means that you as a citizen have not followed the law. Yes, you can point to government and say, well, government, you, 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 you did wrong, so because of that, I had to do wrong because I had no other recourse. I, I you know, I, I, I needed to build, I needed a house, I, you know, etc. These type of things have happened in our society. Didn't mean much to us back then. But it is important now because we're dealing with the letter of the law. All right? So, yes, um, there might be a politician who's liable. Yes, government might be liable for certain actions and could be liable, and will always be liable, okay, if they don't do things correctly. But there are citizens also who have done things incorrectly. Maybe not malicious, no mal intent, mm -hmm. okay? But the law says that you have done wrong. These type of claims can come in an investigation and be placed the public prosecutor. Some people might incriminate themselves. We have to protect people from incriminating themselves also. Because as a, as, as a politician in a small community, you have to make certain decisions, or you might be faced with making, forced to make a decision with something that concerns a brother, a sister, a cousin, or whatever have you. And it, it, it is that much more prevalent in a small society than, for instance, in Harlem. Let, let me yeah. say this, uh, uh, MP Richardson, the bunk campus. Mm -hmm. and that whole thing with the land issue. Here you have a husband and wife literally being tortured 
I say tortured right now because this is too long. Exactly. Uh, right or wrong? You know, whether they're, whether yeah. they're right, right or wrong, wrong, I don't know because yeah. I don't know the full details, yeah, but it's wrong yeah. the way they're being treated right now. Because of the length of time, the duration of time that it takes for this thing to... That is inhumane. Period inhumane. That we don't want anymore. Which means, and for such a reason, the, 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 the Dutch are saying, well, that's why we want to beef up the, the justice chain. We want to get more public prosecutors involved. And they also want to pay for it. Okay? Now, all of that is good. Well and good. Once you function within the parameters that are set there for you. We wanted to make sure, for instance, that the leadership of those people who have to function resort on the, the justice minister and, for instance, police or, you know, any kind of any justice official or police official come on the, the commissioner of police, where if they don't function the way they ought to function, it's then the decision of either the Minister of Justice or the Commissioner of Police to deal with that person as an individual, not following the rules as prescribed. All right? Um, if in the law these type of questions are left open, if in the law Article 43, for instance, which guarantees certain rights to human rights, you know, things like that, the right to to legal protection uh, and that sort of thing. And that is not seen or is abrogated or is deleted from this particular law, which conflicts with our own local law and also the kingdom law, Article 43. Then we have to keep an eye on this and make sure that all of those elements are there to protect human beings. Let's take the situation of Hiroshi Yimoto, public situation. How long did it take? Okay? And in the finality, he was cleared. Who's going to pay for this damage done to this good gentleman? These are things, if we didn't know before, we surely know them now. We have the prudence, we have the experience to be able to look to make sure that this does not happen. Yeah, and, okay. And all that stress can actually even shorten his life. You never know what he went through. So suppose you're a diabetic and stuff like that to go through all of this and what do you and myself know about this situation? I've never been there before, but as a physician I can tell you what it can do to you medically. Yeah. Okay? And then, worse, if you intentionally did something wrong, that's one thing. But that after three, four years, you are cleared. Your family members, your children going to school in a small community like this. A wife that has to work and, and don't know if her husband will produce tomorrow again based on not his capabilities, but based on a court case that, that, that so, goes wrong. So you're saying that... Um the Parliament of St. Martin is concerned that this whole integrity chamber doesn't take on these superpowers that get out of control. Exactly. That's our biggest concern. That things are done as prescribed, and that's it. And not somebody going outside of the rules to harass St. Martiners needlessly or not following the rules. That's it. That's you're going to see that that's most of the concerns, and I think uh, uh, MP Franklin Myers was on your program, and he probably outlined some of the concerns that, uh, that, that Parliament had. And it's not just coming from a particular faction or the, or the ruling uh, coalition or whatever it's have you. across the board. It's across the board. Across the board. Okay? Because yeah, I, I had our MP, uh, Sarah Jacobs, here last night, mm -hmm. and she's also uh, against it. Yeah. So. You know? So um, it's not that we are categorically, oh, uh, integrity chamber, no. I have done research in the Caribbean, and most of the, the young, I would still call them uh, 
independent countries have their integrity chamber, but their integrity chamber, for instance, is there. It's not theirs. And it's, it's, it's independent in the sense that no politician are nominating people to direct this particular chamber. And ours either. But we have concerns about how, for instance, the chairman would be, would be chosen. Holland chooses one, uh, St. Martin, let's say the, one of the high council of state chooses the, 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 um, the candidate, you know, and of course not government, because that would be political. And those two people get together uh, to choose one neutral person who um, has an affinity to St. Martin. Now, what, 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 what does that, that, that terminology there, that, that term entail? Okay, what is affinity? Uh, are we certain that that person will understand uh, the St. Martin culture? Is, is that what needs to be placed in the explanatory notes or whatever have you? Okay, because that for us is very important with regards to their view of things and how they interpret uh, certain things and certain actions that are probably bad habits or good habits, but customary um, actions of St. Martiners. And we, we, we might be doing something wrong, but what do we mean by doing it? Do we intend to break the law? No, um, many things have happened in St. Martin that might, might not have been lawful, but everybody went ahead, accept them as part of progress, and, and, and we went ahead. We've gone to a different stage now where we need to look at things and we need to rectify them. Okay. Another issue is that, okay, this integrity chamber comes. All right, yes, we have accepted it and so forth and so forth. All right. But are the structures of government, the organization of government, within the departments, within the ministries, are they... Do they know exactly what is required of them? This, for instance, is what we saw as a challenge in Parliament. A lot of information comes into Parliament. Are all the people there sworn to secrecy? Is that part of their job description? Have they been told what information they could disclose publicly? and what information they cannot disclose publicly. We went into this thing with a lot of rush and, you know, uh, and a lot of things we, we were not ready to do. We are saying, give us a chance to do that. Give us a chance to rectify things. Because if the, the integrity chamber comes tomorrow and they want it quicker than anybody else, the Dutch, but the government structure and apparatus is not up to date, with regards to what and how they need to carry out their job, then they're going to make mistakes. And it will be illegal. But have they been told? Have they gotten the opportunity to be able to correct some of the things that they did wrong in the past? That groundwork, we feel also, should be there. They should be informed. And we, we are doing this in Parliament too. We are going to have uh, uh, integrity courses for, for, for the Secretariat and eventually also for the political appointees. This, this is a plan of ours. Hasn't been executed yet, okay? But has been talked about in Presidium, etc. So that those type of mistakes, at least in our little enclave, will not uh, take place and people will not become liable and if they become liable, it's because of their own intent. All right. Uh, MP Richardson, you are also a control doctor at the SLV. And these days we hear a lot of complaints about the way business is done. A lot of patients are sent to Venezuela. Sometimes patients have to wait. And I know just uh, late last year I had to intervene for a patient that was waiting for over oh, two and a half years just to go abroad to see a doctor. Uh, are you surprised that this is uh, still the case? I'm, I'm a little surprised, yes. And I really don't know what is the, the crux of the matter here. Mm. Is, it, is it finance, you know? 
Is it um, that really and truly uh, people are not doing their work? Um, it, it is difficult for me to state this because many of the people who I worked with uh, and were able workers are still there. Um, I have been able to deal with uh, at least two uh, medical colleagues before I left. So, and I, con I continue to, to associate and work for the Social Security part-time uh, for two years. So, um, it's hard for me uh, to believe. I, at times, I'm very apprehensive to, to investigate the matters. I get a lot of complaints too, obviously, mm. okay? Uh, and I wonder at times, what really is the problem? Um, the, the Social Security um, has its challenges. And some of the challenges are related to what goes on in the hospital and the limitations of the hospital at this point, which is something that everybody... Can, can you hold uh, that thought yeah. there? I, want, I just want to check this. Uh, or, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're off. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. To the limitations of the hospital. Um, we're getting criticism also from Holland. They're saying a lot of things about our service on St. Martin um, because uh, they are concerned about service and cost of me the medical cost of, for the people in Saban Station. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, without movement, uh, in those particular areas, the, the, the Social Security is going to find itself um, spending more money than would be necessary if we can get the hospital problems. Well, that's all that's me, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Oral Gibbs, let me call. Hello? You don't like call? Yeah, hello? Evening. Good evening. Do you and your guests a very interesting topic? And certainly, I am happy to see a member of parliament, Dr. Lloyd Richardson, because there are things that I definitely am going to ask him, especially pertaining to the state of health on this island. The other thing is concerning the exorbitant cost of living, which is forever climbing. Cost yes. Of what? Cost of what, Doc? The exorbitant cost of living. Oh, cost of living. Okay. Which constantly is climbing. Yes, it is true that this is something which is spread it out. Nevertheless, since Martin business, persons are using it to their advantage more than the consumer being able to benefit from whatever he bought. And that is dangerous, not only to us, but always, but also in the tourist sector. I strongly believe that parliamentarians are too much focused on Palestine more than the, the, the concerns of the people. And that is wrong. Another thing, you would knowledge as a doctor, yes, medicines are spread out fully in different ways, description wise, but we have been overflowed with generic medicines and it has either risk are not economically as strong as us. Have better quality medicine. I'm going to stop at that. And I respect how you are functioning in Parliament. I want to hear what you have to say in terms to that. Thank you. Uh. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lake. Uh, you touched on some salient points that are really um, problems, existing problems in St. Martin. Uh, it seems as if um, you too, um, like some other people in the society, and some MPs also, uh, have a problem with Palatino. Well, let me tell you um, how I see this issue. Every member of parliament who travels to Palatino is exposed to a plethora of subjects that can be of importance to St. Martin or not. It all depends on your role as an MP and how you see that role and how you play that role. When I, I had two years in parliament and did not, and was the only MP that did not have the opportunity to travel to Palatino. When MP Leroy de Weaver realized this, being a physician, he shared the commission of health with me. And the first trip I made, I went to a conference that dealt with cooperatives. I came back immediately because I saw where this generic law that they had and gave to us at Palatino could work for taxi drivers, vendors, anybody in St. Martin that had some independent or what we would call uh, uh, one ein man a, 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 a sole proprietorship. Up to now, uh, MP Cornelius de Weaver is trying his best to get a motion passed so that we can implement this law and have the social security, for instance, cover these people. But if you take, for instance, the vendors in Front Street, many of them, and there are more than 44 of them that, have, that held license and I've had meetings with them, uh, that need health care. And let's say that they're, they're diabetics and uh, they're not getting the right care Whenever that care becomes necessary, it will be at the emergency level, which is far more expensive than normal prevention and first-line care by their physician. So there you see you could be facilitated by issues of, that you learn in uh, Palatino and don't have to go and reinvent the wheel. I, for instance, uh, made a lot of, of, of progress with regards to St. Martin serving as a sub-hub to create more work uh, for our people. That idea came to me also in Panama. In St. Martin, you talk about the cost of living just now, we pay for everything to be imported that we use. We don't produce anything of significance. When we import, whatever we import, uh, we pay for the trip to St. Martin and the trip out of St. Martin because boats leave here empty because we have nothing to export. But if we create the situation of a sub-hub, which the Panamanian government and officials are willing to assist us with, and also the ambassador of Holland to Panama, and myself and Rudolf Samuel have championed that cause. And every time we go, we jo don't just go to the meetings alone, but we go to see our ambassador to see how he can facilitate uh, business for St. Martin. And eventually, we got the Chamber of Commerce to bring him up to give a, an explanation of how that could be done at Westin. So, there are a whole lot of people, and I agree that we don't disseminate enough information about what we do when we travel, etc. And maybe there are those who um, just go and don't use the information. But I'm telling you, this MP here has done all he could do to use the information. Suppose we have uh, uh, an epidemic um, today of Ebola. Are we prepared to deal with it? 
Who in the region has experience with dealing with it in Africa? Well, Cuba does and has done a very good job uh, in dealing with this particular problem in Africa and can help us and are ready to help us with it. But if we had no knowledge of this, if we don't have no camaraderie, no relationship with them, how can we get them to be able to help us with this at short notice because of the nature of these type of diseases um, if we don't travel and if we don't have relationships with them. Holland has embassies all over the world and as a, 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 a for, one of the foremost nations in, in, in this world, they keep in contact with just about most of the countries in this world covered through their embassies. So MP Richardson, are you saying then that um, for all the critics of Paul Latino that it's it's valuable to Parliament and to St. Martin and should not be uh, criticized as a way it's in The way it is. And this presidium mm. has already taken steps and have reduced that budget by 249,000 guilders, the way we have structured it. Number one, we reduce the participation per committee to two persons. And if a person doesn't go, then yes, one can fill in for them. If people cancel, they have to pay back whatever parliament paid extra for that particular ticket. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to, to, to Mexico because of the integrity issue, and I have to pay back 636 guilders. I went the following day to pay it. They didn't have the instruction yet, so I'm waiting on that, and I'm, right. I'm going to pay it. So we are saving government money by so doing. I'm going to take a call for you. Oral Gibbs yeah. Lyman call. Hello. Hello. Good night, Mr. Gibbs. Good night, Good night to your guest. Good night. Uh, Mr. Mr. Gibbs, you know, you have a very important man, the president of parliament. But, you know, certain things you see, they are not certain things, but in the beginning of the show, they mentioned about uh, the integrity. You know what, Mr. Gibbs? I have 48 years voting, Mr. Gibbs. And 48 years or more are hearing about this integrity. It comes from the politicians. Mr. Gibbs, integrity is not for the man who is wearing tires. It's not for the girl who is in the store selling T-shirts or underwear clothes. It doesn't for the guy who is selling rings. It, it's particularly for government people, politicians. And I don't remember a time, Mr. Gibbs, that four years for election, Mr. Gibbs, that a politician was not involved in some kind of corruption deal. Always politician, Mr. Gibbs. And I think it's high time, and i like Mr. Richardson to answer that, I think it's high time that we should have some decent politician going in government and work for the people of St. Martin. Because the problem is here is with the politicians. Because as soon as they go in the government, they don't got no fingernails. And when they go in government, they get long fingernails. Well, you know, let me just add before MP Richard respond to you that I had, I had the deputy leader of up here just last week, and he made reference to one of the most honorable members of parliament, which is Mr. Richardson, here this evening. So, um, and, and, I, and I agree with uh, MP uh, Myers last week when he made that reference, because we are very critical of politicians, and I am most of the time too, but there are also some good ones among them, and um, this gentleman is one of them that was mentioned by one of his colleagues, too. Did you call him? M Mr. Gibbs, hmm. my point of view is this. I'm not saying that they're not good politicians, but parties in them is responsible for those politicians to put there. Because, look, we, we're so shameful here now. We have down here, and down we July now, and the biggest party here does not have, because I consider them, Something is wrong in St. Martin. Okay. You haven't got a party, or you win the, the, the election, or you join up in one or two other politicians, and up to two points. They don't got seven ministers there run the government. Okay. We got a prime minister got to handle two portfolios. We got a next one handling the labor, two portfolios. Something is wrong with you, Mr. Gates. Okay, Why nobody don't want to be a minister? Let, let, let. You're telling me now that everybody's caught. <laughs> let me have... I don't understand it. Let me have... have let, a good night, Mr. Good night. Let me have a happy... Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, uh, 
Yes, well, um, I, I understand your, frustra your frustration, uh, caller. Um, and I, I'm not going to tell you that sometimes I don't feel so myself. But at the beginning of this country, we made certain agreements. And those agreements, be they wrong or right, are haunting us today. One, for instance, is the CFT, which is good, okay? But there are certain things that we can't do. We can't borrow more money than is suggested by the CFT. Why? Because they're scared that if we do so, we might the following year have to deal with budgets that are going to run us into problems and some of the essential things that we need to carry out in government we might not be able to do. So these, these agreements that we made um, actually tie our hands to do certain things that we want to do or that we promise to do. Now, you spoke about integrity is, is about politicians. Yes, I know the media, you know, and many Dutch politicians themselves have focused on St. Martin or the Caribbean side of the kingdom and point out, you know, uh, certain cases that involve politicians, yes. But as we were just discussing here during the break, many of these cases are taking too long to resolve. And we are prejudging the people, okay, whether they're right or wrong, uh, and not waiting for these cases to unfold. How many people didn't think that Mr. F um, Hiro Shigimoto was wrong? He was cleared of his wrongdoing. We have damaged him terribly in the press and in other areas. You know, he was called names, etc. Uh, the gentleman and his family has suffered immensely. And then to be cleared, are you willing to pay for those damages? Not all the politicians who are involved in crime could we prejudge and say that they have done wrong. But I want to go further than that. I want to tell you that when it comes to integrity, integrity concerns everybody. And if you just allow this chamber to be formed like that, you might be judged on just simple terminology that St. Martin has used. For instance, a commissioner or a minister or MP, you check that thing for me? Right away, somebody listening to that phone call, what thing? What is he going to do for this particular person? Didn't he swear? that he's not going to use government goods or take decisions, you know, as preference of people, et cetera, et cetera. So we have come to that time. It's the buzzword now, and we have to deal with this. And not only people in government have to deal with it, everybody working wherever they're working, uh, performing a duty, have to play it by the rules. I, I, you know, it's, it's just so difficult when you see what this island is going through right now. And, um, I, you know, sometimes a lot of people say, well, you know, maybe the way politicians conduct business, did things, probably brought this on themselves. I don't know. But let me just take this call for you very quickly. Uh, you're on live call. Hello? Yes. Let him tell his government to pay the Social Security SFB. I don't understand that. Um. The, the social security, uh, the government owes mm. social security. Oh, oh okay, for, yeah, for yeah. Time. That's an issue with CFT, yes. claiming that it should be yeah, paid. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, um, caller, um, well, thanks for that. I, I think it's something that's going on long before St. Martin became mm. a country that these bills were owed. They're not, they're, it's not the responsibility of even governments, um, you know, starting from 20, uh, 2010. It's also the pension uh, fund, right? Yes, pension, both the pension fund and the social security. Right. And it's a problem because they are big, very large amounts, okay? And um, government tried since uh, 2005, and how I can tell you that is that uh, many of the teachers, for instance, were not in the pension fund. And we had to do I would say um, tests that you would normally do at the beginning of your, your function anywhere uh, for them uh, while the next week, for instance, we were called to do uh, um, assessment tests for them to leave 
uh, you know, um, government going on pension. So these, these were mistakes that were made in the, in the past, and we, we have to find the money but to, 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 to solve it. But this amount is what, 76 million, give us some money? Yeah, yeah, yeah in, that, in that region, and, and, and for both of them. Mm -hmm. And so this is the reason why um, <laughs> the, the, the CFT is making suggestions to us. Um, yes, the meetings were kept uh, behind closed doors to, for instance, sell uh, certain assets. And I'm not going to go into that uh, uh, right now. One minute, wait, 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 one minute, please. <laughs> You're telling me that the CFT is asking the uh, St. Suggesting, Martin, yes, suggesting yes. to sell, at, really, it's beginning to sound like Greece. Um, Although, I know we're not there. But no, uh, but yes, you know. And you've got to remember that um, when you look at a pension fund, mm. uh, soon we are going to experience the problems that uh, Curacao experienced, for instance, where um, you know, all of us are growing older. We probably, because of you know, health um, and the baby boomer situation, mm. uh, will live longer. And we, there are more of us now that are on pension than before. So that is something that the, the, the pension fund in Curacao uh, and elsewhere, for instance, in Holland, yeah. has already faced. And their move or their suggestion is to up the pensionable age to 62 or to 65 to be able to uh -huh. solve that, that, that particular problem. But uh, Richardson, I, I got to go back to this because this is kind of surprise. You were saying when you said that the suggestion made for the Martin government to sell some of assets what, airport, uh, GBE, uh, the, the harbor, TLM, are those all on the table? Well, not the essential ones, of course, not on the table, but mm -hmm. certain suggestions have been made. And for me, uh, yes, um, the government-owned companies are more essential to this economy than, let's say, the government building, for but instance. The, but they make up or, some 40, almost 40% 40 of the GDP of this island. Yeah, so, so obviously we can't do that. And the, 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 the response was that, hey, we are not going to do that. Okay. Uh, but what I'm saying is there is an advice, okay? So that, that was brought up this year? It was brought up two weeks ago. Okay. Okay? When we had a, a private session mm -hmm. uh, with them. I'm not going to go into details because it's a private session. And we don't want to, 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 to um, basically create pandemonium either and so forth to make some people take it. You know, everything in St. Martin, <laughs> from the time you say it, live a life of its own, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm saying a suggestion was made because we need to come up with solutions. 75 million, 80 million uh, gillers are not, mm -hmm. is not going to be found on the street somewhere. Uh, we need to seriously think about these things, okay, and stop looking at, well, who did it? I'm not concerned about who did it right now. It is terrible, but it was done. I am a St. Martina. I'm a representative of the people. We need to look for solutions to solve these problems. I'm and sorry. they're not always just easily forthcoming. I'm sorry, only have 20 seconds remaining, uh, Amber. <laughs> um, what I want to say is that uh, I've taken up the challenge uh, after being asked, and I voluntarily decided to continue to run because I think that, you know, I could make a, a great contribution uh, to this island, especially in, 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 in my field of expertise. Uh, government does not function like that. Uh, does, uh, government is not formed based on what Lord Richardson uh, wants to do for his country. Uh, government is formed politically, and hence, uh, there too, there are deterrents. But we still need to fight and together uh, rally to solve the problems of St. Martin. Uh, thank you, uh, MP Richardson, and I uh, hope we can have you back sometime again. Oh, I'll be willing. Uh, thank you. <laughs> but that's sometimes it. That's you it. wake up more, more skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Until then, good night. Take care. Bye.